Mel, lovely to have you on board again. Look, the weather is just heaving at the moment. Let's hope that this blows itself all out. I've been obsessed with the forecast for tomorrow. They say intermittent showers in the afternoon clearing. It's going to be a little windy, but Eden Park drains really well. So let's not worry about it. Uh, yeah, if, if it is wet, then we know that suddenly you can take about t uh, 10 points off the black fern. So that is a big major for me. I would be super worried. But... I still think that they'll play fast tempo and get the ball out wide. I don't think they'll change too much, um, but it will put a heap load of more pressure on, on New Zealand if it's wet. So, no, I'm not happy. I'm not happy. Come no, on, son. Come on, son. Come on, Auckland. Do it for us. Look, and, and, and Smithy was on the programme on Tuesday and said exactly the same thing. He talked about it's in our DNA. We've got one way to play. And I also think that he's right. Don't change what has worked so far. This is how we win rugby matches. We go wide. We use the ball. We look for space. We play at pace. Got to be sensible, but is that the tactics that you expect to see? Well, it's all about the Wayne Smith tempo uh, game plan. Um, I have to say, though, you, you know how I talked to you last week about how we don't constructively break down um, you know, our black ferns at the moment because we're all just enamoured with the team. I was yeah. with Anna Richards um, at this big dinner for all of the people involved with women's rugby, and we had a very... And also Hannah Porter. Um, and we talked about how Yep, you play your tempo game, but just on the odd occasion, you have to uh, vary it up a bit. And um, Anna in particular was wondering if they had, I guess, the confidence in their leadership on the field to actually say, yeah, we're playing this game, but just at this moment, we need to make the decision on, on the field and just go for um, a kick to the line-out and go for the line-out. Because last week, Kendra Kochi absolutely um, tapped it a lot but too much, mm. and then she kicked it aimless kicks twice. So just a little bit of variation there because I think England will know we're going to quick tap. So let's just change the tempo when we want and control the tempo, not just go up in high tempo. A lot to absorb there. A couple of questions here. Mel Robinson, two-time World Cup winner with the Black Ferns. Um, <clears throat> is that, look... We've, you know, we've, 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 we've got to be smart, but we've got to play to our strengths. But you're exactly right. At the same time, I was really worried about that last week because there were times where we needed to be calm under pressure, and we weren't. And the thing is, I, I just, I wonder how, how, or if we're going to get away with any mistakes against a machine. And that's what we're playing tomorrow, isn't it? This is a rumbling machine of a team, England. Oh, they are. Um, England have uh, their full pack have scored 25 of the 38 tries here at this World Cup and 24 tries from line-out position. Um, so if you give away penalties, um, if you run into that massive pack, Canada tried to take them on up front because that's Canada's uh, game plan. And we saw what happened. They just couldn't get a try because those Fords are powerful, they're fantastic on D. Um, so really, uh, you know, you always have to try and take the other team on physically, but England um, are going to give it to the back ferns. I actually think France marginally had uh, the, um, I guess the, the, they won in the forward pack. Yeah, the ascendancy, they did, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's right. That's the word I'm looking for, mm -hmm. Marty. Um, so, no, I just think black ferns, probably their target should be around centre, second five. That's where they should set things up. Um, first and foremost, and, and get that big rumbling pack moving around around the field. That's the way they'll have to do it. Look, I put my hand up last week, said I'd be the most hated man in the country. I predicted France, after talking to you, we're going to win that semi-final. And that is because <laughs> I'm so... Look, I'm so disappointed with the lack of analysis from the mass sports media, who do a lot of gush fest yep. stuff, which is fine, a lot of rah-rah stuff, but in terms of breaking actual teams and players down, strengths and weaknesses, are not providing any of that. And so, you know, for most fans, they go into that game thinking, oh, you know... Or, you know, Ruby, Tui and Portia. But in actual fact, if that game was played nine times out of ten, France would have probably won that game and it was bum squeakingly close. Yeah. And so again, so I'm listening to you and I'm listening to what you said last week when you were spoke, speaking to Anna as well. And I've been quoting you saying, my go-to is Mel. And she said, be very worried about this French side. And you were well, right. Mate, we, we should have actually lost it because um, well, the choice that perhaps should have been made is because the first five Carolyn drew on, turned around to her captain and said, I can't, I can't kick that. I can't do it. So um, if, if Kicker says that to the captain, I would have probably gone for the line-out where also France is super good. So that was the wrong decision on France. And then unfortunately, Duran choked. But if she hadn't told, New Zealand would have lost. And that would have been it. So um, extremely lucky. Um, and England are just, well, the step up from France. So New Zealand's going to have to play 100% 
um, to their strengths are going to have to have no errors, no penalties. They'll have to be perfect to beat England. But guess what? England could also choke because we've got a very strong home crowd here. They've got all the pressure on them. Um, and they've won 30 games in a row, which means just like roulette, they're going to give one up soon. That's right. You're going to give one up soon, aren't you? Anyway, fascinating you say that because Wayne Smith, who was on the program on Tuesday again, uh, I asked him about that. I said, you know, what were you doing when she was lining up the kick? He said, I'd folded up my laptop, I'd put my thing under the thing, I was walking out the door, thought we had actually lost that game. And and I said, yeah. and I said, well, look, you know, what about kicking for the corner and going for that line out? He said, Marty, no coach in the world would have done that. So apart from you and me, Mel, no other coach in the world would have done that. Okay. And so I said, I said Smithy, of course, I, I bow to you. But yeah, look, it's the pressure of the moment. And this is another thing I want to pick your brains about. You've been in two of these finals. How did you prepare and how did you prepare your teammates? Did you notice nerves in your teammates? How do you settle that kind of stuff? How do you calm everyone down? How do you get the focus going? Oh, mate, it's, it's really individual. Um, so some people, it's true, they do listen to music. Um, I used to egg out a bit and I was one of those painful ones like Andrew Merton's where maybe my ADD kicked in or something. <laughs> so I was making jokes and all over the joint singing the national anthem terribly um, because that was the way I prepped by using humour to distract myself. Um, others just 100% go within and you can't talk to them, you avoid them like the plague. So that is the most important thing I reckon is how you turn up, how you keep yourself calm and just focused on small parts of the game. So um, if it's a kicker kicking off, just making sure that they go through their process, just treat it like another game. Um, and once they kick off, you're, you don't even really notice um, the crowd while you're actually playing. It's only in the moments where you're not playing that you can hear them. Um, and, yeah, it's just it's just concentration, hyper-focus, I would call it. Uh, and then that physicality, throwing yourself in the physicality, that always helped with me as well. Um, it's hard. It's really hard. Um, I, I'm going to be interested to see who does falter under pressure because um, if you make a mistake, can you bounce back in a World Cup final? That's a question that needs to be answered. Double World Cup winner Melody Robinson for the Black Ferns is with us. <clears throat> also, was it different second time around than it was the first time? Was the first time you get a feeling like, you know, this could be the only time that I'm actually here. I've got to plant my flag at the top of Everest because I might not come back. No, you never think there's an athlete. Don't be silly. Okay, all right. Well, that's why um, I'm not one. Yeah, so, yeah. you know, yeah. No, no, you don't. And, you know, um, the first World Cup in 98 was actually the first official one that was ratified. Um you, there was a sense of elation around that because it was so fresh and new and you know we, we knew we'd changed how women play the game um, with the style that we were playing back in 98 and then 2002 we had all the pressure on us uh, in Barcelona and actually it wasn't as enjoyable and um, more pressure too on our coach Daryl Suisa who was a lot more strict than us Jeez, the, the way that he used to restrict our diets um, was heinous I used to lose so much weight when I was in camp with the black fern because he restricted, I needed McDonald's to keep myself no up my playing. God, you can't have Marty. McDonald's yet. That's <laughs> but what does he tell a group of women? He's sitting there telling a group of women, you're not allowed to go to McDonald's. They're looking at him going, you're not my husband, you're not my brother, you're not my father. Get out of it, mate. Oh, my God, he used to, he used to catch us, buddy, breaking the rules all the time with food, <laughs> all the time. Um, but, yeah, yeah, so that, that pressure um, will be massive, and I think England will definitely feel it more than the New Zealand girls who are probably there to play for young girls and, and their family more than anything, whereas England are playing absolutely to win, so they'll have their eye on the win and might miss what is in front of them. So we'll wait and see. It's great, isn't it? Yeah, it's I don't think we know who's going to win it. So no, that's, that's no, awesome. we don't. Look, I mean, and that, you know, 30 matches in a row. I mean, all of that for them. And again, you know, when you look at it, 19 times out of 20, they probably win that game. But hey, this is what World Cup finals are about. We saw what Pakistan did to us in the, in the T20 semi-final. You know, it's just, you don't know. I hope for the players' sake, sakes, that they win this for themselves. You know, I always think at times like this, Mel, put aside the friends, put aside your family, put aside the country, put aside all of that. It's you and your mates in that dressing room. That's the only thing that's important, isn't it? It is, 100%. Um, you have each other's backs. You've got to trust each other in your defensive systems and know that a you've got a person inside and out you and, and outside you and you don't go outside or, or miss your channel. You never um, second guess them. Um, the other thing I guess that people don't actually talk about or haven't um, brought out is England and New Zealand as athletes, as rugby teams, we actually don't like each other very much on the pitch. And I could probably tell you that their English and Black Ferns team have, don't really socialise with each other. 
it's not until we retire that we become friends with English players. That is how... You told um, me this four years ago. I remember you telling me this yeah. four years ago. And I remember thinking at the time, That's really? True. Is that, is that, that we do no. it? Is it, is it... I mean, okay, I'm not going to use the word animosity, but there is just a I don't like you feeling, is there? Um, it's a... There's firstly a mutual respect for between both the teams at how good they are and how much fantastic history both have created but at the same time I would say there's a huge competitiveness so competitive that they can't really be mates off the field right now. In fact it's always been like that. The no, only I mean, reason I got to be friends with, with Sue Day who's now the CFO of RFU is because after the 2002 Rugby World Cup final we both had to do a drug test neither of us could um, pee, pee. Yeah. so we had to spend the whole time in the, in the bloody <laughs> thing talking to each other and I went oh actually she's quite nice <laughs> How long did you have to wait? How long did, it, how long did I mean do I have to drink a lot of water and stuff? How long did it take? Yeah, well, um, that takes ages. In fact, Farah Palmer was always the one that used to get drug tested, and she took so long that she often didn't turn up to the aftermatch um, speeches. Oh, my God. So someone else usually had to do it, yeah. <laughs> I mean, the pressure. I mean, we all feel a little bit of pressure in those circumstances, but I, look, I wish I could sit next to you and Anna um, during this because that's what I want to hear. I want to hear the qualitative analysis, and I want to hear the breakdown, and I want to hear what the advantages are. How, how much is this going to come down to micro moments? And I say goal kicking as well. I was really impressed with our goal kicking last week but you know what finals are like they're decided on one or two bits aren't they i mean it could be a blowout but let's hope it's not that but it could come down to this most simple thing like kicking well it will and um it could come down to whether an offload sticks or not or if someone makes a decision the right decision at any given moment that is how tenuous um a win or loss is um you know uh Someone listening to a line-out call and understanding, analysing it in their head, knowing exactly what they have to do in that drive. Um, uh, analysing the opposition, New Zealand, they've got to know that England have been throwing long a lot of the time um, in their line-outs and they do shift drives. So analysing that and being able to um, contend with that and make sure that you defend that in the moment. Those little micro things are amazingly important and there's so many of them that happens over a rugby game and that's probably why I like rugby because it's complex, it's awesome. The distractions, the outside noise and the reality of that noise at Eden Park which is something that none of the players have experienced and that's the England players as well, a crowd that big screaming and yelling and how much you can actually hear and whether or not, you know, our, who gets absorbed, you know, because I know the Poms will go all kind of within themselves and, get, and, and they'll use that crowd as a motivator and things. Is there a, I mean, God, I hope we don't get too distracted by this or the moment. It's not a rock and roll stage. It's a game of rugby to win. It's got to be simp simplified to that, doesn't it? You yeah, know, when they come out, I think that uh, the New Zealand team will really enjoy the crowd sport. That's when they absorb it um, and take it in. But as soon as they start playing, they'll, they'll forget about um, the noise and the crowd because they'll be focusing in on what they, they do themselves. One point to note is uh, women's rugby uh, in this country is not really played at night time. So actually, these Black Ferns, this World Cup, this has been the first time they've really played 7 p.m., 7.30 p.m., I should say, kickoffs. And if you add in some moisture to a 7.30 yeah, right. p.m. Mm. kickoff, this, these are scenarios that they haven't dealt with before. So that's going to be interesting to see how much prep Wayne Smith has put into other scenarios like nighttime wet rugby. I tell you what, I bet uh, there's if, you know if we if we win this final that there's going to be a, you know he'll reveal at some stage that they trained at seven thirty at night every night. I bet there's something like that. The guy yeah. is a ge you, yeah. you know he's a genius now, yeah. right? <laughs> I know there'll be something like that yeah. going on. Yeah, so, you know, yeah, um, something that we don't know about because and I love the fact the way I love the way that both him and Ted that he's so clever at deflecting everything. He makes it about himself. He talks about having fun. He says a couple of things that us media people latch on and that and again it takes the focus away so much from the players. Um, oh, I also loved, I'll finish on this, I loved Ruby Tui yesterday thanking the media at a press conference. When the hell has that ever happened? Thank you people for getting our stories out there. I just, God, I laughed. I just saw it. She say, she's brilliant. She, she knows exactly the right words to say at the right time, doesn't she? Well, she's the biggest superstar in New Zealand rugby at, that, at this moment, men or women. So um, she is just unbelievable. Honestly, uh, she's lighting this tournament up. Can we talk at some later stage about how then we, and I believe it's a we, 
convert this interest, this enthusiasm, these kind of crowds? Because it's just not as simple as going, okay, all of these people are now going to watch all women's rugby. And we, you know that it's not that simple. There's got to be a plan. There's got to be good brains sitting down actually working this out, how to convert. But we'll talk all about that at a later day because it's just about this final tomorrow. I'm God, I'm nervous now. I'm talking to you. I'm all nervous. I'm going along. I'm going to be screaming, shouting, carrying on like I do. Are you going to be in the press area? Are no, you? I'll be in the crowd. I just got two seats in the crowd. I'm just going to sit with everyone else. Oh, yeah. Fabulous. fabulous. Mm. No, all my children are in the crowd, so hopefully I can see you. And yeah, I'll we'll wait you can babysit them for me. <laughs> <laughs> all the best. Thank you so much for the time that you have given us. I really appreciate it. All good. That's no, great talking to you.